kayo po'y aming pinipuli, kayo po'y aming sinasamba, binibigyan ng pangal ng kilala, sa inyong katapatan, sa inyong pangal, sa inyong pag-ibig sa amin, at sa inyong regalo na napatawaran sa amin mga kasalanan. Dalangin ka po, Panginoon, na aming pag-ibig na sa pwede na ipinadarama sa amin, ay amin din po itong musukulian ng karampatan, pag-ibig sa pamagitan ng pagsinong sa inyo at pagpakasakas sa inyo kapangyari ng kanonan niya. Magpanahin po kung bawat isa, kaya naaano mo ng puso sa pakikinig ng inyong mensahe sa araw na ito. Ito po ang aming sakong talagin sa pangalan ni Jesus na magsabi na, Amen. Masawa ka pa, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Maligayang Pasko. You know, for businessmen here in the Philippines, Christmas for them, the Christmas season begins when? September, right? <laughs> Going to the malls, you hear Christmas music. So we want to take advantage of that. Next week, we'll have two short videos, nine minutes, one, another one less, on should Christians celebrate Christmas? Christmas? Should Christians celebrate Christmas? Now you may think, of course, but there are many believers that because they know the history of December 25th, they know the history of the trees, they know the history of Santa Claus and commercialism, some of them don't celebrate Christmas, and I think it's a big mistake, and I want to show you two videos next week. Our subject is prophecy, and guess what? Christmas is all about prophecy. And our name of our subject this morning is the reason for the season. The reason for the season. Now, there's a lot of pagan practices in Christmas. There's a lot of commercial reasons for Christmas, but Christmas is probably the most important event in history because without Christmas, there would have been no cross. And so it's really an important event. Christmas is a part of prophecy. First of all, way back in the first man and woman in Genesis 3.15, the first Christmas, the birth of Christ, was a fulfillment of the seed of a woman. Usually a woman only has the egg and a man has the seed, but this was a unique birth. And then the seed of Abraham, is a descendant of Abraham, and then he's from the tribe of Judah. That's a very interesting story. And then he's, he's a descendant of David. That's important. Notice Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be And give. And call him. Now first of all, this is very Jewish. Yet, Christmas is for us. You may think Christmas was started by Christianity. It was not. It was started by Jews. It wasn't a story. It was an historical event. Now, all of the traditions of Christmas were started by different Christians, pagans, all kinds of people. But the story itself is biblical. It's inspired by God. It's history. That's what's so unique about Christmas. It's a historical event that happened. The date is not important. All of the commercialism is not, is not important. What is important is the true meaning, the true reason for the season. Michael 5, 2, imagine this. But you, Bethlehem, this is 500 years in advance. 500 years. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be what? Now part of that has happened, Bethlehem, but a part of that has not happened. Israel's in the land, but Jesus is not ruler over it physically at this time. He will be physically ruler over Israel in the future. Okay, so the reason for the season. John 18, 37. Jesus answers that question. You ready? Jesus answered, you are right 
and saying, I'm a king. By the way, that's future. He was not a king when he lived on this earth during the first 33 years of the first advent. In fact, what? For this reason I was born. For this reason I came into, into the world. You know the reason? I bet I could go around and all of you would give me correct answers. You would say he came to save us. He came to, be, to heal the sick. And he came to feed the poor. And he came to die on the cross. He came. All of those things are true. But listen to his answer. Listen to his answer. You ready? This is the answer of Jesus Christ. To testify to the what? The truth. The truth. Is that important? I mean, it's okay to have traditions. I don't care what your tradition is for Christmas this year. Do it and enjoy it. With your family, with your friends. Enjoy it. But at least know the truth, right? You think that's important? Yes. To testify to the truth, everyone on the side of truth does what? One of the reasons for the season, and some people are offended by this, please don't be offended. This comes from Jesus. The reason for the season. Okay? John 3.3. 3. Jesus declared... It's like a no one can see the kingdom of God unless now Jesus was a Jew and he was saying this to a Jew and it's for us. Okay? And by the way, it's impossible on our own, but it, it's so simple with God. We believe in him, he regenerates us, he makes us spiritually spiritually alive. When we were spiritually dead. And we're born again. That's the reason for the season. Without him, that wouldn't have happened. Okay, Jesus Christ is the truth. John 4, 24 through 26. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in what? Now, you may do a lot of things for Christmas. That's okay. Enjoy it. But remember, you only can worship God in what? truth. So you need, in addition to all the other things you do at Christmas time, you need to worship God in truth. And that's what we're going to do during this Christmas season. Okay, the woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I will speak to you. So this is 30 years after his birth. But since he was the Messiah at his birth, he's still the Messiah at age 30, and he's still the Messiah, the promised. The, the word Messiah means the promised Savior of the world. The promised Savior of Israel. Israel has a future. Listen to John 14, 6. This is so important. Let's say it together. You ready? One, two, three, go. Jesus answered. I am the he is the way, and without the way, there is no way of going. He is the truth, and without the truth, there is no way of knowing. And he is the life, and without the life, there is no way of living forever. Right? He's it. And no one goes to heaven, goes to the Father, except through who? Jesus. And that's why Christmas is so important. Because it's the birth of the promised Messiah, the birth of the seed of a woman, which is not heard of. Usually it's the egg fertilized by the seed of a man. But in this case, it was a unique birth. Okay, so we're studying prophecy. Everything about Christmas, <coughs> listen to me. Everything about Christmas happened in the age of what? In the age of Israel. I'm going to read verses related to the Christmas history, not just the Christmas story, the Christmas history, and you watch how Jewish it is. All of the traditions, all of the traditions about Christmas, and I, I'm not criticizing them, okay, celebrate, enjoy your Christmas, 
They all came in the church age after the real story of Christmas. Okay? The traditions came after. But the real story is history. And you can... I'm sure you know Santa Claus has nothing to do with Christmas except it's a nice story, right? I mean, I, yep, I'm one of those guys that put a stocking on the fireplace. I'm one of those guys that put cookies so, you know, he can have a snack. And I'm one of those guys that watched my sister put the gifts under the tree, okay? But that's okay, right? That's just a tradition. It's not true. It's not history. But if your children have a tree, enjoy it. But also, also, don't you think you should tell them the truth, the true story, the history of Christmas? Absolutely. And that's why we're studying this subject. Okay, so we sang, Great is thy faithfulness. And we're in the last days, there's no doubt about that. Actually, for the last 2,000 years, but it has been the last days. But right now, it's probably the last hour of the last day. So in Isaiah 46, 9 through 11, I'll say it this time. I am God! <laughs> Not me, but the God of the Old Testament, right? The God of the New Testament, the only God there is. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I am God, there's no other. I am God, there's none like me. I make no what? That's why 4,000 years before it happened, God told us what would happen. The seed of a woman. The birth of the promised Savior. The solution to sin. Notice this, verse 10. I make known the end from the beginning. I say, my purpose will stand. I do all that I please. This is God. What I have said. Where did he say it? Anybody know where God said things? It's called the Bible, right? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And we have it in writing. What I have said, and you can read about it. We're, we will read about it this morning. That will I bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. Every time you look at the true history of Christmas and what happened on that day, what you are seeing is the faithfulness of God. What you are experiencing is the fact that God always, always keeps His promises. No matter how dark it looks, His promises will stand and He will bring it about. Application. The Christmas season and the faithfulness of God in these last days. The Christmas season, I hope during this Christmas season that it will become more meaningful. Especially, we have a group called the Magdalena, Magdalena Survivors. And they're going to teach us how to tell Christmas stories that are based 100% on the Bible, yet in a very nice, easy manner. Both in English, Tagalog, will be available. Okay? So, the reason for the season. In Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Now, normally, normally you have a pastor, a teacher, Sunday school teacher. They teach you everything about the Bible and then you suck it in. And that's it. Sit, sour, and soak. What we want you to do this year it's not only, it, that's important by the way, Bible teaching, Bible teachers, they are gifted by God to teach you. And you need to know that background, you need to know all of these things. But, you also have a responsibility as an ambassador for Christ. And we want to make this story so transferable. So transferable. That all of you can tell this story in two to four minutes. Boom. You can tell it. You can. What a better time, right? What a better time during this season to say, hey, can I tell you a story about Christmas? I mean, we're not ashamed to say, hey, Santa Claus is coming to town, right? 
Can we say, can I tell you a story about Christmas and then you give him four minutes, two minutes? Let, let us hold steadfast to the hope we present, we profess for Okay, and what should we do? And let us consider how we may do what? I can't think of a greater thing you can do during this season than to share the true story of Christmas in a very simple form, in a very simple way. We will give it to you in your language. So you can say it in two to four minutes. That sound good? And you can be an ambassador for Christ. We're challenging you to do that. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but... And all the wars we see. Not only Christmas Day, but who knows? You know what happened this week, right? In a very rich part of the United States. Ventura, California. They call it Thousand Oaks. It's right by Highway 101. Christian universities. Go ever last, how many of you here were at the Gopi Feast last week? Were you here? Did you see all of our line dancing? Did you see that? Well, every Wednesday night at this place, they had line dancing, country western music line dancing. And somebody went into that place and shot 11 people dead. The 12th one was a police officer who had been on the force for 29 years. He would have retired in one or two years. He leaves a wife and a son killed, going through the door to save people. That can happen anytime. Or Christ can come back before Christmas, right? So we need to be ready. Okay. Should, Chris, should Christians celebrate Christmas? Next Sunday I'm going to, during this time, we'll have two short videos and show you the things that are not true about Christmas, but it's okay, it's just tradition, and the very truth of Christmas. Now, why, listen up to me, you who don't like the traditions of Christmas. Whatever your tradition is in your family, enjoy it. But at the same time, within those traditions, we want to give you something that's very true. Okay, we have a presentation this morning. We have parents coming in early. Thank you, parents, for supporting your children. And just before your children perform later, we want your nose to be bleeding, okay? So, I take a look, okay? He's in the, he's, he's ready. So, well, I told them, all right? English now, okay? Salama. Okay. Though I am free, and we long to know, this is the Apostle Paul. Imagine all of the traditions in his world. Though I'm free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave for everyone to, make, to win as many as possible. Right? To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like those under the law. Though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. How do I apply that to Christmas? I'm an adult. I know my wife would sometimes wonder, but right? I'm, I'm a senior adult. And I have lived through a lot of Christmases, right? And I don't believe, okay, this is going to be a big shock for you. I don't believe Santa Claus has anything to do with Christmas, okay? Is that a big shock to you? But I know hundreds of people that still go see Santa Claus. You know right here in this city, one time, teacher Cindy dressed up like Santa Claus. She really did. Is she going to hell? For sure not, okay? She's going to hell. Why did we do that? Because it got us into a school where we could give the true story of Christmas, right? And the kids had a good time, teachers had a good time, and they heard the truth. It's okay. Notice this. 
To those not having the law, traditions of Christmas, I became like one not having the law, though I am free from God's law, but under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. Some people have never even heard. You take Jews. All they believe in is the Old Testament. But a lot of them celebrate Christmas, especially the businessmen, because they like to sell products, right? And so in their stores, they have Christmas trees, they have Santa Claus, they have Christmas music, even though they're, <laughs> they, they don't believe in they, they, They're Jews. Why do they do this? Well, we know why they do it. Is that okay? Sure, that's okay. We buy their products, right? But somebody needs to tell them the true story of Christmas. Am I right? Yes. Makes sense? Yes. So, to the weak, I became weak to win the weak. If you believe that Christmas was on December 25, you're weak. You don't know history. But it's okay. We, I don't care what day you celebrate it on. I just want you to know what happened. Right? That's the important thing. I have become all things to all men so that by all possible means I might what? Because that's how you become a believer, by hearing the truth. By hearing the true story. I do all these things for the sake of the gospel. Listen to me. If you know the true history of Christmas, it's good news. We exist to share the good news. It's about the Savior, His birth. The fact that he came to save us from our sins. Wow. That's good news. So, last week we told a Christmas story. We told it first of all in English, and then teach you they told it in Tagalog. Later on, if you want the Tagalog version in writing on paper, you see Pedro, Peter, our IT guy, or you see Teacher Yanni. We'll give you a copy of the Tagalog version. The reason I told this last week, because I just finished the training. And this is actually the second part. The first part was somebody else's part. So this week, I'm going to introduce the first part. But before I do, let me just go through a couple of parts of this to show you how Jewish this is. And how much Christmas is prophecy. Prophecy means God predicted something in advance in writing, inspired by him, with human writers, in writing, hundreds of years in advance, and it came true just like he predicted. That's prophecy. That's what you will find if you study the Bible. Okay? Eight days later, the child was officially named what? Jesus. Jesus. The parents brought Jesus to the place of worship to present him to the Lord. That day, they met an old righteous man. What, if, what was he doing? Who had been waiting for the what? Father's Savior for a long time. Okay? When he saw baby Jesus... He took him in his arms and he praised God and he said, Lord, now I am, I am content. I have seen the Savior you have given to the world. The old man blessed them, Joseph and Mary, and said to Mary, it will be painful to you that many people will reject him, but he will be great joy to others. And so a very old woman named Anna, a spokesperson, person for God also was there. She worshiped God day and night. She came along when the old man was talking to Mary and Joseph. And she began thanking God and telling everyone the what? The promised Savior has finally arrived. Predicted 4,000 years in advance in Genesis 3.15. Predicted all through the Old Testament. His exact place of birth, like a 5-2. The fact that he would be born at the sea of a woman, a virgin. Isaiah 7-14. And last week, teacher Yanni, by the way, 
This is the hint of God's story from God's word. Teacher Yadi gave it in Tagalog. It's available to anyone who wants it. You can tell this story in two to four minutes. And you will have the privilege, you will have the honor. You can honor Jesus Christ, God the Father, by telling the truth about Christmas in any traditional culture. Whatever the, however they celebrate Christmas, when I throw them out, just tell them the truth, right? Okay. Now, we've been talking about this guy. Next week, I'm going to show a short video of what, now imagine, this guy was born in Israel. Israel just came to be a state after 2,000 years in 1948. And it was weak until about 10 years ago. When he was a teenager, he became a believer. Now he's amazing. And he's a, he was an officer of the Israeli party. And I want you to, he wrote a book. My wife and I both read this book. Amazing book, Last Hour. But I want you to hear what somebody that has all the credentials you could possibly have, what he says about this book, okay? This is from Dr. David Jeremiah. That's a nice biblical name. Founder and president of Turning Point, senior pastor of Shadow Mountain Community Church in El Cajon, California. That's San Diego. I want you to listen to what he said, okay? This is, I mean, he has all the credentials you can have. High school graduate, college graduate, seminary graduate, senior pastor, all of that. Listen to what he says about this Israeli. He's an American, but he's talking about an Israeli. Last hour, I have known Amir Tashpate for two decades. That's 20 years, ladies and gentlemen. I had the privilege of traveling all over Israel with him when I was leading a tour, and he was leading the tour guides. Amir has also spoken to the church I pastored in San Diego, California. I read the last hour in one sitting. It's pretty good. Pretty, it's a pretty big book. Amir's defense of the uniqueness of Israel and God's plan of redemption and his arguments against replacing Israel with the church. Now, he has a church. He believes in the church age. But he also believes that Israel has a future. There are many people that think God has forsaken Israel. We call it replacement theology. It's not true. Say this. Israel has a future. Go. Israel has a future. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we already see the beginning of it right now. Even though there's probably more Filipino believers in Israel than Israeli believers, many millions will believe in the future. And Israel has a future. Okay. So, Amir also wrote a paper, and I had 16 pages long. I'm only going to give you one slide. But it's very interesting. And this sets up the story that we're going to begin today. Okay? After 400 years of silence, since the end of the Old Testament, we hear of two names, Zechariah and Elizabeth, husband and wife. They're old. They can never have children. She becomes pregnant. She has a son. You know his name? John. He becomes John the Baptizer, okay? Now, listen to the meaning of their name. Zechariah means what? He never forgets his promises. Yeah. Elizabeth means? I made a promise. I made a commitment. I had prophets write it down. I said he's going to be born in Bethlehem. I said this. I said this. It's going to happen. Both names, Zechariah and Elizabeth, are a token of the hope we can always have, even the times that seem like silence from God's side. Can you imagine how long 
Zechariah and Elizabeth prayed for a baby, and it didn't come for a long, long time. And then when it came, it was such a blessing. Look at this. That he, their, what is that he, they're faithful to his promises and remembers all of them as he has sworn. Now I added this. This age couple who couldn't have children all their life had a what? A miracle child, John. They continue to trust God and promises during some very dark times. Elizabeth was a cousin of who? Mary, the mother of Jesus, and encouraged her during her unique pregnancy. This was a very unique pregnancy, that's for sure. Okay? I'm doing good. So, I gave you a story last week. It was called... The birth of Jesus and his dedication. That's actually the second story of Christmas. Today, I'm just going to give you the scripture of the first story. Next week, this week, our Magdalena graduates, together with me and Teacher Cindy, we're going to write the English version and the Tagalog version. So by next Sunday, you'll have two stories for the Christmas season, okay? Say yes, okay. Yes. I mean, you can talk about everything else. What kind of food you're gonna eat on Christmas, your new dress for Christmas, your kids are gonna talk about what kind of gifts you're gonna get for Christmas, you're gonna talk about the parties for Christmas, you're gonna talk about going caroling and raising some money for Christmas, you're gonna talk about all of these things and it's all okay. We support that. But how about if we know the true story of Christmas? Wouldn't that be nice? Very important. So, Luke 1, 26-32. Now, I'm just going to read the scripture. Then we're going to put it in story form without violating the scripture. But easy to tell. Okay? In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. By the way, if you don't believe in angels... There's a song you should sing. I believe in angels, or a song. The Bible talks about angels 200 times. Okay? And the Christmas story confirms that there are angels, angelic creatures. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town that exists in the Middle East. To a town in Galilee to replace the existing. By the way, that's where our near lives right now, in Galilee. To a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of who? David. David. The virgin's name was? The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, What? Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you ought to give him the name. Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. How will this be, Mary asked. The angel says, I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the Holy One to be born will be called the what? Son of God. Even, listen to this now, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. The birth of Abraham's son Isaac was a miracle. The birth of Elizabeth's son John was a miracle. And the birth of Mary and Joseph's son Jesus was a miracle. And if you don't believe in miracles, then when you die, you think you're dead. But the fact is, the moment you die, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. And it's nice to be ready. If you don't believe in miracles, there's no resurrection. If you don't believe in miracles, there's no eternity with God. If you don't believe in miracles, I don't know how you can ride on this earth that's traveling so fast. No stand, going through space. And she said, and she who was said to be barren in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible. Let's say that, verse 37. Everyone, one, two, three, go. Only Pastor Dennis. 
Come on. Give me a break, okay? Verse 37. One, two, three, go. For nothing is impossible with God. Thank you. Okay. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be as you have said. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried down to the hill country of what? Judea. Judea is in the Middle East right now. For 2,000 years it was barren. Now it's barren. Okay. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? That's a good question. That the mother of my Lord should come to, through me. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Okay? So, and Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one who has done great things for me, holy is his name. His mercy extends to all those who fear him from generation to generation. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth, her cousin, for about three months and then returned home. Why do you think she did that? Because she needed encouragement. She needed someone who understood this kind of situation. You can imagine how Joseph felt. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had a mind to do what? Divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Everybody, this is the truth. This is Christmas. This is the real story. Enjoy your tradition. So let's read this together. You ready? One, two, three, verse 21. She gave birth to a son. You are to give him the name of Jesus. As he will save his people from their sins. Father, we thank you for our opportunity this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for these parents that go to a different, maybe a strange church, just to support their kids. And I pray this morning's service would be an encouragement to them, a blessing to them. We pray for, we pray for their children and their teachers, that what they do this morning will bring honor to you. Because you love, you said, don't keep the little children for me. And Jesus picked little children up into his arms and blessed them. And I pray that that would happen this morning. In Christ's name, amen. Can you all stand up and